still. Hold still, you. What is happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And we have a microphone in the booth today that I never, never in a million years expected to have in the booth. It's quite a privilege to be able to use this microphone, to speak into it, and to share it with you guys. Which microphone is this? This is the Sheps Seamit 5U shotgun microphone. And oh boy, <laughs> this is a pricey, this is a pricey little microphone here. And honestly, I like I said, I never really expected to have this in the booth today. One, because it is like a really, really expensive microphone. And two, you don't hear of this one being used for voiceover. It's used in dialogue all the time, but not necessarily in voiceover. And I'd like to share it with you, and I'd like to talk about the features so that you can hear it, so that you can decide if this is a microphone that's right for you. But we'll also compare it to maybe a couple of other shotgun microphones so you can see w where it where it comes into play. We'll compare it to my 416, which is used a lot for voiceover, and maybe we'll throw a couple of other mics in the, in the other stand just to get a side-by-side -side so you can see where it stands. But first, let's talk about the CMIT 5U. This microphone will set you back... $2,400? $2,400. This microphone is no joke. It's not cheap. I've got the spec sheet right down here, so I'm going to bring up the spec sheet. We'll talk about the specifications and some of the reasons why I think this becomes such an expensive microphone. And some of the things that make it expensive, from my understanding, are not necessarily things that help it be a better voiceover microphone. And maybe part of the influence on why you don't see it for voiceover very often. It's clearly got it's clearly got a great sound. And you can judge to see if you like it. But there's a couple of parts to it that make it even more expensive than something like the 416. At two more than double the price. There's a couple of things. First, the thing you notice as soon as you as soon as you put this microphone in hand is it is light. It is incredibly light three point something ounces, 89 grams from the spec sheet. Very, very light. Half the weight of a 416. Now, in a voiceover situation, I mean, I've got mics that weigh multiple pounds. In a voiceover controlled environment like this, weight is not a factor. But if you're holding this microphone over your head in a, in a boom operation kind of scenario, Grams matter, especially if you're going to hold, be holding this thing. If you need to move it around quickly, if you need to get it into, into spots, weight can actually matter. So you, you'll be play, paying for the engineering to get this microphone to be as high quality and as durable as it is at such a light weight. That's number one. Second, this has some additional features that aren't necessarily important to a voice actor. It's got two different high-pass filters, two different high-pass filters that maybe would be important for voice actors. It's got, uh, what, 80 and 300 hertz. 300 hertz really is not a, a high-pass filter that you'd really need in voice acting. But if this microphone's being outside, where it's windy, where you can't get another take back, where you're trying to maybe mic up a sporting event or something like that, where there are a lot of atmospheric conditions... A 300 hertz high pass filter may actually become important just to reduce out wind noise or rumble or or other environmental factors. We would we might use the 80 hertz high pass. Lots of mics that we find in the booth would have that high pass. You could choose that. But this also has through a switch on the top a high shelf filter. So you can actually uh, think of like the, the, what is it, the Shure SM7B that's got the switch on the back to add presence to the dynamic. This microphone in its flat state is very bright and clear, but you can even boost that up even more. I think I can do that. Hang on one second. I can even add brightness to that tone at, f what is it, 5 10K, there's a 5 dB lift at 10K, making this an even brighter mic. In the booth, you probably would never need to do that. However, in a boom operation, in a, in a sound gathering kind of scenario, 
that actually could become important if you've got multiple layers in front of or around this microphone. You've got it inside a Zeppelin. That Zeppelin has a wind jammer on, on the outside of it. All of a sudden, you've got a lot of stuff that's attenuating high frequencies before it reaches the mic. So you may need to lift that to bring some of that airiness, to bring some of that detail back in. So that might be important for a microphone like this out in the world, <clears throat> but not so much important, not, not so very important here in the booth. So a bunch of features. Let me turn that off just so we can get it back to a, a normal state. So a number of, a number of features that maybe don't, don't serve the booth, uh, somebody working in a booth for, for what we need. This is a shotgun style mic, but you notice that the interference tube looks a little bit different than something like the 416. When we put a 416 next to it, we can see that the interference tube itself is shaped differently. And this is something that I think Sheps would say sets it apart. The shape of that interference tube can affect, and, and this is not necessarily my area of, of expertise, but that the interference tube can affect the high frequency response of the microphone, especially as you're moving around the microphone. The shape of these slots can affect the high frequencies that come into it. And they help with determining how the microphone rejects sound when you're speaking to it at a 90 degree angle. So I'm 90 degrees to the capsule right now. And as I move to the front, how that sound falls off and the response of that sound, even from an angle, can change based on the shape of that interference tube. If I do the same thing for the 416, maybe we notice a difference. I'm 90 degrees to the microphone right now, and as I move back towards the front, we may note that there's a difference in that response. I think Sheps would claim that they're a bit smoother. As you move from directly on the mic to off to the side, the way the highs attenuate naturally would be a bit smoother, whereas the 416 might be a little bit more unsatisfying, different. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, sure, I'm not sure. When you look at the very highest frequency patterns, the 416 shows these really like, like fingers of sensitivity where there's, there's almost like a, a, I'm not sure, like these fingers of areas where it's, very sensitive to high frequencies and then insensitive and high, then very sensitive, then insensitive as you move around, sort of due to the shape of the interference tube itself. And then for the Sheps, they show it as being more like ripples than these big fingers. I, I don't know how, how much that's noticed in actual practice. So if, if you're swinging a, a boom back and forth between two different actors and you're just swinging it, you know, maybe a half second late, over to the other actor, would you notice that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But in the voice acting world, we're, we're locked in front of the microphone. We're locked in front of it. So I don't, I, I don't know how important it is to think about, well, if I'm a millimeter here or I'm two centimeters over here, how much does that change? I don't know. The other part of the interference tube pattern is the shape itself on the CMIT there's slots evenly spaced all the way around the circumference of the microphone. Whereas on the 416, they're just sort of on two sides of the microphone. And then there's two sides of the microphone that are, for the most part, they're solid. What Shep says in their, in their documentation is that means that there's a, a, a rotational asymmetry on the 416. So the 416, if you're off axis and you turn the 416 90 degrees, the interference tubes are now receiving that sound differently. And there may actually be an impact on the sound as you rotate the microphone this way. So there's, there's um, an asymmetrical pattern from sound coming this way as opposed to sound coming this way. Whereas the Sheps, it's the same all the way around. So as you rotate the microphone, there really shouldn't be a change in tone and you don't have to worry about maybe how the microphone is placed in the Zeppelin itself. You can move it without having to worry about a change in tone as the mic rotates around its uh, 
longitudinal longitudinal axis is that what you'd call along the along the length of it again though that is that is pretty subtle it's pretty subtle but that kind of engineering and that kind of thought hold still hold still you uh, that that kind of engineering and that kind of thought can impact the overall price other than that the specifications, like if you're just looking at these on paper, the difference between these specification-wise is not huge. Same frequency response, 40 hertz to 20,000 hertz. They both have a presence boost. It's slightly sh shaped slightly different, different between the two, where the CMIT, uh, can is presence boosted in the highs, but then you can further presence boost it with the switch. The 416 just has a general presence boost up starting about five or six thousand hertz uh everything else is almost the same uh, virtually the same sound pressure level 132 db versus 130 db i've got the specification sheets right down here they both take phantom power they both have uh, almost the same sensitivity the um the, sh the sheps is slightly more sensitive at 17 millivolts per pascal uh, and 25 millivolts per pascal it's so much of it very close to the same the Sheps does have a slightly higher power consumption. I think it's because of the LEDs that are on hand, but that really should be non-impactful for anything that we're doing. The weight is, as I mentioned before, the weight is very different between the two. This is 175 grams, and this is only 90 grams, so this weighs about half as much as the 416. Again, maybe important if you're going to be holding this thing. Dimensionally, you can see it. They're very, very close. I think the Sheps is a, maybe a couple of millimeters thicker, but otherwise, dimensionally, they're they're virtually virtually identical. So on paper, they are very similar. Feature-wise, the CMIT 5U has a number of features that I think are designed for very specific professional environments, like sound gathering, like being on set, like gathering sports or environmental sound. But sound-wise, we go back and forth. You can decide on whether or not they're so significantly different that if you were looking for the shotgun option to add to your mic locker in a voiceover situation where you'd be like, man, that 5U is so much more. I'm going to save my pennies and skip the 416 and go to the 5U. That might be something that's important to you. The last thing I'll mention is you notice that I've got a, uh, an aftermarket pop filter on the end of the 5U. I rarely have to add pop filtering to my 416. It's, it's fairly well insulated from plosives. I don't get a lot of plosives just naturally. The CMIT 5U, my experience in my testing, that's not the case. It is really easy, 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 easy to put plosives into it. So I've got the aftermarket Hook Studios Octo 80, 842, I think it is. It's like so difficult to find these now. I'm not sure Hook Studios is still making these, which is a shame because it's a really good pop filter. If you can get one, get one. But they're hard, they're hard to find. But I do have an aftermarket pop filter just so that I don't ruin this with plosive after plosive after plosive. Again, this microphone is not designed or intended from, for somebody to be this close to it and speaking right into the end of it. It should be up here. It might be over here. It might be pointed away. It's probably going to have a Zeppelin around it. This is not really designed for the situation in which we're testing it right now. But in a voice acting situation, this might not be so unusual uh, a, a mic placement. It would probably be up, probably be up here. But from an, uh, an apples to apples comparison, I wanted you to, I wanted you to hear it. So the CMIT 5U, what do you think? Does it sound good? I think it sounds really good, but let's compare it to a bunch of other microphones. So you've heard it against my most expensive second, uh, my, my most expensive shotgun, the one that I've purchased, the one that, that lives with me here in the booth. We've got some others down here. Why don't we just throw it in there and compare it just so you can get an idea of sound wise. If something else sort of, if this is outside your budget, if there's something else that, that piques your interest, how about we do that? How's about, how's about we work backwards this time? We'll work backwards and go from the sort of my most expensive down, down in price. I might have to step out for a second. But now we've got the Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone. And this one you buy, you can get in a kit. Then I think it comes with a, it comes with a, a boom 
pole mount, you know, sort of this like pistol grip that works well with the Rycoat Lyre. And I think it comes with a Dead Cat Windjammer. My box is over there. It's been a while since I've taken it out because I normally just use it like this. But this is the Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone. Dimensionally, it's a bit smaller. It does have a, a, a different interference tube pattern, and you can hear what it sounds like. This, for me, this is also the, the NTG5 is also a very bright mic, and I think that's designed to overcome the stuff that you would normally have in a Zeppelin around this microphone. I think they, I think they, they boost those highs up, and Rhodes tend to be fairly present mics to begin with, just generally, I think, as part of their design. But this is also a very present, very present microphone. So we can hear how this one sounds. All right. Next up, we've got the Asden 3500L. I chose the L because dimensionally it's similar to the, to the 5U. I reviewed this one not too long ago on the channel. So if you'd like to see the full, the full review of this, uh, the 3500, I have this one. And it's, this is a 3500L, the long version. There's a 3500 uh, without the additional that's a, that's a bit shorter. But you'll be able to hear the difference between these two. Again, no buttons, no switches on the Asden. It's just the microphone. So the sound is what it is. You'd have to fix everything else in post. But now you have a chance at $550, uh, you know, about one-fifth the price of the of the CMIT. Functionally, not on parity function-wise, but you can at least get a, a sense of the difference between the 5U and the Asden. So this is the Asden 3500. Uh, so there you go. That's a, a that's a, that's an, another microphone to compare these two. Got a couple of more. Okay, next up we have the Deity S Mic Two, longer long shotgun. There's an S Mic Two S that's a bit shorter. This is the S Mic Two that's the longer of the short shotguns. This is the one from Deity. This one you should definitely hear a sound difference between the two. From my experience, the deities tend to be reasonably flat microphones, so they don't have the same presence boost that some of the other microphones have. So that may be a, a sound that you find more pleasurable. It may be a sound that sounds dull. I think it really depends on, on what uh, peaks your ear. But this is like, what, one... Eighth the cost of the CMIT 5U, so you can you can get a, a, a difference, you can get a sense of the difference. My experience for, for voiceover, if it suits your voice, the, the DDS mic 2 is, is a great choice for a shotgun in the booth. It's darker than the other ones, so if you've got a really bright, sibilant voice, sometimes the, the darker microphones, the ones that don't have that same amount of presence boost, can be helpful, can be helpful. So the S mic 2, and I think, what I say, $359. So a really significant price difference between the two. But now you've had a chance to hear the CMIT 5U versus the Deity S Mic 2. I think I have one more. Do I have one more over here? Let me take a look. Okay, I did have one more. This one is the Cinco Mic D2 uh, shotgun microphone. Big price difference between these. This will run you about $250. So we're almost like fully one-tenth the price of the CMIT 5U. And you'll be able to get a difference, uh, a sense of the difference in how they sound. Nothing wrong with the, the, the D2. In this situation, the D2 has served me very well. I've used it a lot here. I've used it in my control room. It works great for Zoom meetings. It works great as a, as a just off-camera mic if you're creating your, your home YouTube studio. The Cinco Mic D2 has been great. I would not expect it to be as durable or as uh, wide ranging in its capabilities as the CMIT 5U. But if you don't need a if you don't need all the features and you don't need the, the durability, the, the extra lightweight, if you don't need all of that, then something like the Cinco Mic D2, you can hear the difference. You'll be able to get a sense of the difference between $20, four hundred dollars and two hundred and forty nine dollars like that's a huge that's a huge huge delta so now you can go back and forth would you expect this to sound more preferable the the seam at five you yeah i would guess so but you can see if the if the D, the cinco is it one tenth as good or is it 50 percent as good sound wise for something like a vocal booth or something like a, a home studio you may find that this is exactly what you're looking for. But at least you get a sense to hear the two next to each other. 
And I think I think that's the last of my long shotguns, at least the ones that share the same form form factor. So we'll leave it at that. Does that help? I've been really excited to to try this CMIT 5U. I'm really grateful to the fellow booth junkie. Thank you, Scott, for sharing this thing with me. It, it's going to come right back to you. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share it with you. I, I hope this helps. I hope it was at least interesting or, or fun. It's cer- certainly fun for me. <laughs> but now, get out there. Grab yourself a microphone. Maybe a $2,500 mic. Maybe a $250 mic. But get yourself a microphone so that you can get out there. You can record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.